what is our responsibility as two people together is to get to know each other over time, but not with force, not with expectation, mm -hmm. not with assumptions. Well, you're my boyfriend, so you have to do this. Right. <laughs> It's called, I could say to you, if you were my boyfriend, it would mean a lot to me if you would like to do this. But if not, I don't want to put you in a place of being miserable to sort of try to make me happy. What good is that going to make me happy? If you are doing something for me, but you're miserable doing it, why would I even want you to do it? If I'm a sane person, if I'm a healthy person, but usually people aren't very healthy. And I think also, if you have, if you're, if somebody else is making themselves miserable to make you happy, yeah. you sense that yeah, too. Of course you do. And what, what, what kind of a person am I to have you do something for me, and I say I value you, but you're miserable. So somebody, I think that's where the equation comes from. Somebody usually wins and somebody loses in the old scheme of things. There's a winner and a loser. I don't believe in that. I wouldn't be doing this interview with you today if we both didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. We are both accountable for this interview. It's supposed to be a good thing that we're doing. And if it's not, well, we talk about it. Yeah. We don't just assume, and we don't, it's not one or the other, it's us doing what we're doing. And I treat all my friendships like that. Nice. It's it great. is wonderful. But if you don't have good self-esteem, then it's like, oh, they don't care about me, oh, they, and then there's the blame game, and then there's the this and poor me and all that kind of victim stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm not like that. Not now, because I'm whole. Do you, was there a point where you realized you were whole? Yeah. Somebody asked me that the other day. And they said, if you could ever say one thing that got you to that place, and I said, well, it was a number of things and a number of years to do the whole kind of thing with me. And I said, but learning how to say thank you, but no thank you was a big one, because it made me accountable for me. Right. Because you that realized huge. that you had a choice and you yeah, didn't Yeah, I had to. a choice. In fact, you just mentioned another good word. So many people say, but I don't have a choice. And I say, we always have a choice. Did anybody say choice was easy? It's not. Mm -hmm. Because sitting on the fence leaves you nowhere. Making a choice means making, taking a risk and you being accountable for that. And I also don't like the word mistake. What, what word would you use instead? I say I'm having an experience. It will either turn out good or it won't, but I won't know unless I try. Now some things I don't have to try, but the ones that I question, you know, like even today, saying, gee, is this the right thing for me to do? And usually I don't do anything until I'm clear. And if you had walked in earlier today and I wasn't feeling clear, I would have said so. Hmm. And say, can we just kind of work on this? Come and see me soon. You know, we'll talk again. Or hmm. Because I don't do things that I don't feel right doing just for the sake of doing them or to, for an opportunity or that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I haven't sold my soul. And... Um, and I haven't made lots of money over my artwork. And it's like, well, that's never been my first thing to think of in the first place. It's like, does this resonate with me? Can I sleep at night? Uh, am I at peace? That comes first for me. And when people say, oh, they want peace, I say, well, then you've got to start acting peaceful. It's really simple in getting down to it. But then you've got to do the work to change yourself, and most people don't want to do that work. I was, at a, I was a guest speaker at uh, the University of Washington with a bunch of like professors and students and everything a few years back. And the subject was, why are people like they are? Like, 
miserable most of the time. <laughs> they got jobs they don't like. They're married to somebody they don't communicate with. Blah blah blah. They're in debt. They're they're, they're tired. They're you know, all these things. And after four hours of some pretty darn good minds, we all came to the same consensus. Mankind is basically lazy when it comes to changing oneself. There's work to do. It's like being a painter. It's not glamorous. High fashion is not glamorous. There's something. It's, it's like I was really good at what I did. Didn't like it because I had to be on and up all the time. I remember when I quit. Uh, I couldn't even go into a department store. I was so burnt out on the smile, the high heel shoes, the looking good, the sale, you know, the whole nine yards. It was horrible for who I am as a person. And yet I was the top sales person that one of those years. But it was because I was genuine. I refused to play the corporate game of sell it, even if it doesn't look good on them. You know, it was like I was genuine, and they felt that. People, I think people I think get that do. on some level and really they appreciate do. Oh, it. Oh, my God, yeah, there's nothing like it, you know. Have you changed anybody's life? Oh, God. You know, that's a really good question. I think I've probably changed a lot of people's lives because of who I am, but I don't know that they've appreciated it because it means that they have to go do their homework, too. Mm -hmm. Like for somebody that, say, continually uh, put somebody down. Well, I just say, I love you, but bye. I don't want to be around that kind of energy. And if they want to change for their sake, then they will when they're ready, not a minute sooner. It certainly won't come for me. I think it's very egotistical of people to think that they've made somebody else better. That comes from our own work, I think, to, to do that. You know, it doesn't mean you can't have a catalyst. I know I, I'm told I'm an inspiration and all these different things, you know. That's a lovely thing. I, I must share this story. Yesterday, a little girl came to visit me, and she's 10 years old, and she lives in this neighborhood, and we've had a friendship for two years. She is amazing. It's like, she's like 10 going on to 100. She sits there and she's very serious when she talks. And she comes in and she looks at my artwork and she says to me yesterday, I don't know what I'd do if you left the neighborhood. I would be so unhappy. She said, I just, you're so, look, I was weaving outside. And she says, look what you make, look what you do. And I said, well, let's talk about you for a minute because I don't think most people are paid any attention to, hmm. genuinely. And I said, how's school? Well, I'm doing fine, she said. I got the goal that won the soccer game yesterday too. I said, I said, out of all the things you do, have you ever thought of what, what you'd like to do the most? She said, nobody's ever asked me that. And I said, I know, isn't it awful that people don't ask each other these things? I said, nobody asks me how I weave either. They just go, oh, that's nice. I said, how boring. I said, we should all be sharing with each other what makes us feel good. And she said, I think I'll be a hairdresser and a chef when I grow up. And I said, good for you. I said, are you doing any cooking these days? Oh, yeah. She says, I am. I'm making potatoes. And I'm <laughs> she was just, oh, my God. She is just a treasure. And I said, and by the way, if I ever do move, that doesn't mean our friendship is over. I will give you my name and my address and phone number. And I said, and you can stay in my life forever. Oh, I'm so happy, she says. And she gives me a big hug. That's what people missing. We all need that. It's those little things that make our spirits soar, not the big stuff. 
awards and things. Exactly. Yeah. Rewards come from each other every day. If you're living happy, healthy, peaceful, you don't have barriers. Um, I, somebody asked me when I lived in Seattle, different cities, you know, how did I get by with all the, you know, the criminals, the druggies, the, I lived in some areas that were good areas, but, you know, the gangs came in and there was guns and there was all kinds of things in my neighborhood. And, and I said, well, when you've lived in an area for a while, and I said, and you don't put out a negative energy, I said, we would simply nod as we'd pass each other on the street. I've never been bothered once. Because wow. all the girls would say to me, oh, they're always asking me for money or they're giving me some, oh, hey, hot, hot little one or something like that. And I said, I don't put those energies out. I put out an energy that says, you're fine there and I'm fine here. And yes, we can use the same passageway. And I feel like that about war. I was brought up, I was born in 42 and... So I was a war baby, and um, I can't imagine why people, I think it's a brainwashing, I think it's all of this, to think of killing another person for some territory. The world is a huge place, there's enough space for everybody, but people are living in fear. I'm better than you are mentality. Yeah. It's like, no, you're not. We're just different. Let's talk so we can learn from each other's differences. It's called education, hands-on. And I did that a lot. I've been with a lot of different cultures, and uh, both in relationships as, as well as just traveling to some different places, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's so, what a wonderful way to learn. This, this war thing, has it ever helped, ha helped any situation ever on our planet? No. Yeah. So you get five inches more of land or something for all the killing that goes on. It's like so big deal, you know. I don't worry about, like even my paintings, I respect them so much because I respect myself. But you know, if something happened to them all, they're things. I've already done the work. We don't. We come in naked. We leave naked. We don't own a thing, no matter how much debt anybody has. You don't own it, and you sure don't own people. True. But people think they do. I don't own my children. They were a gift for a few years, and they will be in my life again if they're supposed to be, if they choose to be. And I don't have one-sided relationships anymore either. That's another one I've learned. Mm. I used to go back all the time to see my family, all of them. They never once came to see me. Wow. And as I was getting sicker and sicker, there finally came a place when my body would not go back because I was so sick. So I was incapable. But then that was part of the journey of learning. I was killing myself, literally, being the one to always go to them. I need people to come to me, too. I love the fact that you've come here to my home. It doesn't matter how big or small it is, you know? It's like, welcome, you know? It's like, it, 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 it people, it goes both ways. It's not a one-way thing, and yet people will hold on and hold on no matter how angry they are, no matter how sad they are. And so we have to stop those patterns, and it isn't easy. You know, you lose a lot, but I've gained so much more. You are so incredible. Oh, thank you. Um.